We're live. Okay, very good. Let's go. So, welcome everyone. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Francesco, also known as Lude Crudo on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, so on the web. I am a uh, video, I'm, I make video tutorials as uh, the least serious way possible. And we're live from Italy, it's quite it's uh, set, it's uh, 5 p.m. Okay, right, it's 5 p.m. here, and it will be like uh, 11 a.m. in Indianapolis. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here uh, live for the GenCon online. Um, what else? Uh, and I'm humbled. I'm beyond honored to be part to have teamed up with Big Jockey, as you can see here. Sorry, on the logo on my shirt. I'm glad to have teamed up with uh, the good guy in Da Vinci Jockey, Big Jockey, for this live seminar. As you will, as you will see, I'm not alone. With me are two very talented board game designers. So uh, if the director shows them, I'm pleased to um, welcome to all of you um, Silvano Sorrentino and Martino Chiacchera. Uh, while we wait, uh, for some of you to join our uh, live seminar, our live session. Um, what else can I say? This um, this episode, this live um, uh, this live seminar, will be about how to design a um, an escape room tabletop. As you can see here on the logo, it's written how to design a tabletop escape room, and uh, in this. For a half, uh, an hour and a half, um, we'll see, we'll have an in-depth explanation by the two authors of the line of games, Deckscape, with us, explaining all the things, that all the, you know, the process that, that is behind, obviously, um, the creation of such unique board games. So, uh, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Silvano Sorrentino and Martino Chiacra, if, they, uh, if they're with us. Very good. Hello, Silvano. Hello, Martino. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. How are you? Hello, Francesco. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are very fine. It's hot yet in Italy, but it's very everything, hot. everywhere it in the world, yeah. I guess. So, not complaining. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's warm even here in Germany. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, you're calling from Germany, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's summer it's, after all. <laughs> it's pretty hot, but we're we will deal with this, okay? We will deal with this. Okay, um, for the um, for uh, those who are following in the comment section, I have a couple of questions. The first one is, have you ever played a uh, Deckscape uh, game, okay? And if you did, which ones did you play and what is your favorite? So let us know in the comments. Some of them will appear in this, uh, in this screen. Um, very good. Uh, while the, um, the, all the audience answers, uh, don't worry, I have a couple of questions for you as well, for you two as well, Silvano and Martino. Uh, the first is, the first, the first and most obvious uh, um, question is, how did the board game and the mixture, the, the, the blending between the board game and the escape room and lately Deckscape uh, come to life? Well, let me start by saying that uh, I wanted to make a different game, but then I spoke with Silvano, so it's partially Silvano's fault if we ended up uh, designing Deckscape. <laughs> uh, I, I will let Silvano tell the rest of the story. <laughs> Very yes, good. Actually, actually, this is a strange story because the starting prototype for this game was not an escape room game, but actually a detective game. 
something that then became our new line of detective uh, games. But uh, since this, we, Martino had this idea of having a, a game that uh, creates a puzzle based about a murder mystery, we thought that the idea was, was good, but it was uh, better if we found one uh, a team that uh, contains more than one puzzle. Because, you know, a murder mystery is basically one large puzzle, and we wanted to put a lot of puzzles in, in, in the box. That's also because uh, both me and Martino has uh, a long experience in different fields because uh, I've worked as a puzzle designer for uh, Italian magazines for about uh, 20 years. While uh, Martino uh, is, is young, but he has worked a lot uh, for uh, storytelling and uh, huge games. So he has a great experience in uh, creating games with a simple interface that everyone can play. So we, we thought that uh, creating an escape room in a box would be a nice idea because at the time, we I'm talking about 2016, so four years ago, there were no escape room card games on the market. We, me and Martino only have uh, played one game by uh, Think Fun, it's called, called uh, Escape the Room, escape which room. is basically a, an actual escape room uh, shrink to size to enter in a box. And it contains a lot of different uh, pieces of puzzle to interconnect, etc. And uh, apart from that, and one other uh, game uh, called uh, the Werewolf Experiment, which we haven't played uh, at the time because there were no Italian version. There were no other uh, escape room on the market as far as we, as we knew. And our idea was uh, since the escape room uh, usually is a, a one shot game it was to create the the least little a little and a cheap kind of escape room something that can fit in a in a little box of cards yeah, yeah. so you can, can hold on your hand yes you can play it without without destroying it and yeah. uh, yes you can then uh, share with your friends etc of course at the time uh, the idea was in the air, probably, because uh, other publishers had, had the same idea basically at the same time, like uh, the, the Exit and Unlock series. And we hit the market uh, basically at the same time here in Italy, because we have worked on this kind of game uh, in, in those uh, months of uh, 2016. And this is uh, a very successful uh, series of game all over the world. So I think we probably can mm -hmm. have something interesting to tell. Martina will explain you uh, what we are going to do in the next uh, hour and a half. I'm stopping you, Martino, for a second. Uh, I'm reading the, a couple of comments. They, I mean, um, it seems that the favorite episode so far has been the Eldorado one. So yeah, I mean, most, I mean, many comments told that uh, they preferred uh, they preferred the Eldorado episode. Uh, you know, apart from, you know, we are roasting here in LA and in Brazil. I mean, it's all basically everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, sorry, go Martino. I didn't want to interrupt. You can go. Sorry. Well, uh, just one, one quick thing to mention. I've, I've read uh, in within these years, a lot of different people writing about their favorite deckscape and <laughs> everybody has a different uh, ranking for them. Uh, what we, and this shows that, um, uh, Stefan and I managed to do what we wanted to do, and that is to provide every time a different experience. So all the Deckscape games uh, share the same uh, basic rule system, but they are all very different. And uh, so, of course, one can can like one better than the other episodes, but still, every box is a different take on the on the genre of of escape rooms. So I'm I'm happy every time someone says, "Oh, my favorite is this one," and I'm also happy when they say, "Oh, I dislike that one," because then I want to know why, and we will take this in mind, keep this in mind to to improve for the next episode. So yes. what are we going to do now? We we are basically going to provide some some of uh, our um, guidelines and uh, mm -hmm. our uh, lesson learned about uh, creating deckscapes and, and uh, puzzles uh, in general. And, uh, and then we will uh, uh, make Francesco play a short demo version of, of the game. And then we will come back uh, 
to to the demo and uh, analyzes uh, every card of it, uh, providing examples and for their takeouts on the design process that is involved in in uh, creating uh, this kind of games. Yeah. So basically, I, I just asked the the, the uh, inside the first question. There was the second one, which was how do you design an escape room, a uh, particular escape room board game? So um, how do you design the um, uh, escape room tabletop experience? And what is what there's between? I mean, behind. Sorry, the creation of such a unique gaming style. Um, if you have, I mean, uh, if there are some questions in the, uh, in the comments, just feel free to ask while I give the word to Martina and Silvano for their, uh, seminar, for the actual seminar in which they will delve into this, um, uh, you know, explanation uh, on how to build an actual escape room tabletop game. There you go. Yes, I will start here. We have some uh, images to help us in the process, but don't worry, this is not a PowerPoint presentation, so you, you will keep awake, I hope. <laughs> Just something to help me explain what we wanted to, to tell. So the first advice we are going to give you on how to create puzzles for an escape room is very simple, uh, bear with us, but uh, it contains a precious hint. Because first, you, you need to play a lot, hundreds and hundreds of puzzles. You can find puzzles in uh, several books. You can uh, play Escape Room in, in a box from uh, other uh, publisher. You can play Deckscape. You can search uh, for puzzle on the internet. There are a lot of books by great creators, like also the, the, the great ones from, from the, the, the past, like uh, Sam Lloyd or Martin Gardner. There are new books uh, with uh, precious ideas, etc. Et but the actual int we advice we want to give you is to uh, read the, the puzzles. And before uh, checking if your solution is right, try to think about the, the, the process of you solving the puzzles. Because maybe while you try to solve the puzzle, you, your brain will flow and uh, go in a direction that is unexpected by, by the author. And you may probably start thinking, Oh, maybe in this puzzle I have to rotate this and that, or maybe this is an anagram that I have to solve, etc. And you will find the solution is very different in most of the cases. So start from there, because if your mind is, is suggesting you that the solution is uh, that one that you're thinking, probably that's your way of working uh, on puzzles, because every author has his different style. For example, I've played a lot of logic puzzles uh, from, from also from the past. So this is the kind of uh, puzzles I like to, to create mostly. While Martino is uh, a very out of the box mind, so he creates some crazy ideas. And when we work together, we uh, uh, manage to take those crazy ideas and put it in a, a more logic form so the puzzle uh, works. So <laughs> this is the, the best way to do. Try solving puzzle and think about what uh, you're doing what you do this. So basically, basically the best ideas, the ideas came, came out came from out misunderstandings. misunderstandings. Yeah, exactly. Also, you don't need to, to, to try very good puzzles. Also, try also to Google some uh, brain teasers on puzzles on the internet and see what they suggest you. For example, we are starting here from uh, your very first puzzle. Let's say you want to create uh, your first puzzle for an escape room. And it's a, a puzzle whose goal is to understand what button you have to press to open uh, a door. And if you press the, the, warm, the wrong button, you will get uh, buzzed or the door will close forever, etc. This is uh, something that was explained to you. So you don't just use uh, brute force and press on the five buttons. And uh, this uh, is here to explain one of the basic uh, things we, we, we ponder with Martino when we create uh, puzzles. It's uh, uh, something that we call objection one, meaning we have invented it, of course. So you have, it's the first time you've, uh, you are, you hear of objection, objection one. So if you have a puzzle like this, for example, you have five color button, buttons, the, the players may wonder uh, what, which, 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 which button to play and start thinking about all the different uh, uh, features of the buttons. 
So for example, if you have a, a button in a different shape than the other four, they will think mm, this is the right button because it's a different shape. But or, may, or maybe or maybe it's the blue one because blue one. it's the shortest uh, name. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's 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 why <laughs> we are uh, saying the name of the of the, of the colors because uh, one player can say, oh, it's all six letters, the the name of the colors, but blue is four letters, so the, it's something that does not uh, follow the pattern, and the, every every time something does not follow a pattern, it will. Uh, be pointed like with a big uh, uh, arrow in the mind of the player, and they he may think that this is the, the, the right solution. So be also be always aware of what you're showing and what people can think. Even if a playtester says you something like this, like this, like uh, this is the button because the, 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 the name is shorter. Even if you think this is not a very logic explanation, try to fix this, for example, by removing the, the blue button, because uh, his uh, solution in his mind is as logic as yours. So try to remove all the uh, solution that you do not want. So next image, please. OK, so uh, of course, to solve this puzzle, you will need uh, some uh, hint at some point. So let's say in this uh, room you are playing, you find one uh, piece of paper with this uh, image and these uh, strange writings. So the first thing you have to think is that uh, you always want to create some sort of matching because be between the information you find in the room and uh, the, the puzzles you want to solve. In this case, for example, you have this icon of a press button. So you will probably think that uh, this uh, I piece of paper is telling you what uh, button you want to press. And uh, there is some strange writing uh, below. Uh, you have uh, any idea what uh, is is trying to say? Martina, what will, will you answer here? <laughs> I can see there are two two symbols which are the same. So I guess uh, the the it, it's telling us the name of a color and one that contains a double letter. So for example, yellow or maroon, but maroon the double O doesn't fit in the in the position. Yes, so this is probably telling something like yellow because yes, it contains two letters, but it's not enough for a player to give him uh, enough information to solve uh, this. Uh, also, because depending on the style of the escape room, you might or not have uh, more than one fly to do something. So in this case, we, we said we only have one fly to, to open the, the door, so I will not feel uh, safe to just press yellow because I think it says yellow. So let's say if we show the next next slide, we will find at some point uh, another piece of information uh, uh, that which is a, a cipher that will show all the uh, 26 letters in the alphabet. This is just a, a part of it. And each, each letter uh, shows uh, the, the letter in this uh, fake alphabet. And this, of course, will work. You can uh, always decipher this uh, this with the, the, the decipher and uh, read that it says yellow. But let's say it, this is a very boring way to, to do this in <laughs> an escape room because it's um, a little like a, a puzzle magazine way to do this, not, not a, a real world way to do this. So what we can uh, do to make it uh, better? Uh, Martino, do you have any idea? <laughs> Well, uh, as it is by now, it feels like homework. This is for for sure. Uh, there are plenty way. There there is plenty of ways to 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 fix it. One one way could be to to make the information fit better in the in the in the environment of the of the puzzle, which is by now is nothing because we just have a, a white screen. So I hope you you have some something like that for us. Yes, so let's, let's see the next image. OK, so let's say we, are, we have a doormat at the, at the entrance of our uh, room. And there is something written on the doormat. So uh, what you think is written usually on a, on a doormat? Try to answer in the, in the comments. Let's see if it's the same all over the world. <laughs> OK, not really anything uh, yet. But uh, yeah, hey, we, we we have someone. Okay. So 
Okay, of course, Tali. Yes, usually uh, a doormat says welcome, so you can use this as a cipher. Uh, and if you use this, you can decipher most of the, of the writing on the, on the little piece of paper. You don't have the, the starting Y, but there is something that ends with hello. So it probably is yellow. Yeah? Yes, Farshad, yes. Uh, uh, we just want to reinforce the, the, the solution by giving you more, more hints, just to, just to be sure. So the, the solution is yellow, and you want to press the yellow button. So you are using some uh, public domain information. So what's written usually on the doormat to solve the, this puzzle. And this is something that you will use only if you are actually sure that this is public domain. Let's say you are yeah. creating a room that is uh, played all over the world. And there are some places where there is no writings at all on the doormat. Or something else is says uh, home sweet home, usually, for example, instead of welcome. Well, you can always make a puzzle solvable by adding more information. So if you look at the next image, you can have another doormat, for example, in the same room, in another uh, place of the same room that says uh, welcome. And uh, by combining these two information, you have your uh, cipher and your key. And this is uh, related in the, in the, uh, to the world. And also this is explaining the, the matching of the information in escape room because the the font we used to write on the on the doormat is the same font we used on the, on the piece of paper and also the piece of paper had the icon of the the press button icon so we are connecting the the, the mat to the, the the paper to the to the buttons and if you think about all this information you are sure of what you're going to do now and you can see uh, how by giving more information and having the players uh, uh, joining the dots, you you increase the complexity of the puzzle, so also the reward of the player that uh, manages to solve it. But on the other end, the puzzle is getting easier because uh, now you have more information and you have to make sense of all of them. And by doing that, uh, you, you basically have more room for your... Uh, uh, totes and 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 of course this will lead to an, an eventual and uh, and uh, final solution that will sound as the correct one, not just one of the possible solutions, which is the problem Silvano before mentioned by calling it uh, the objection one when there is yeah. when <laughs> when there are multiple solutions and the player has no no means to tell which is the the intended one. Of course, we have started with a, with a simple cipher because it's one of the simplest things you, you can do in an escape room. And if you see the next image, you can say uh, that there are many ways to, to give this information. For example, you, if you are in a physical room, you can have a, a, a mirror on the wall with the, 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 the keys, the, the, the letters. And if you align with the wall below behind you at some point, so you use the, the, the arrows, as a, as a match, because you always have to match information. At some point, you will have your key and your cipher. And this is something you can do in, a, in the real world or in a video game, for example. But you may also find ways to do it in a, in a tabletop. Later, we will see how to do something cool also in a tabletop games. And if you show the next image, you, you can uh, uh, see one of the principles we use in all the deckscape uh, games that should be used in every escape room, actually, which is avoiding uh, the hard work. Let's say you at, at this point you have the, your your cipher because you are in front of the mirror or because you have uh, seen it on the on the doormat, and you can uh, uh, decipher each letter in your in your message. Uh, if you use the mirror, it's interesting because also you have to enforce team team working in some point because maybe someone is in front of the mirror and is telling you, hey, the eight is an H, the three is an E, etc. But the the uh, goal of your puzzle will always needs to be something very simple, like uh, deciphering a, a simple and short word like yellow, because if you want to decipher this message which if we are doing it uh, right, says something like, 
press the yellow button three times and the blue button once, you are not going to have very much fun. As, as soon as you get to the third word, you are starting to annoy yourself because you have you already had your haha moment when you understand what you're going to do. And uh, the goal of the puzzle should be understanding what to do, not um, spending time actually doing this. Yeah. And that's why also, if we show the next image, uh, both me and Martino prefer not having uh, any kind of known puzzle inside an escape room. So avoiding uh, all uh, crosswords, uh, word finder, uh, or uh, Sudokus, etc. Because even if those are reassuring for the players because they know what they want to do, this will uh, feel like uh, hard work for them because they know how to do this and they are missing that uh, aha moment they just have to to feel it but of course this this can be right if you are using it in the right context for example the the, the mad riddler only if you use one kind of twist to avoid a, a common solution so basically what you want to do while designing a puzzle is to have a puzzle that features something new that can be teach can that can be taught to the players so be, because the players are always seeking for a new challenge something new to discover and if they if they encounter a, a classic uh, puzzle something they already know how to solve it they won't have fun unless and here comes a new space for for designers uh, unless there is a twist so maybe it looks like a sudoku but what you are required to do is something totally different or solving the sudoku is not solving the puzzle solving the puzzle takes something else rather than just solving the the classic uh, sudoku or whatever yes yeah, so next okay martino do you want to, uh, to explain why we have deckscape test time here <laughs> And well, and this was the first one, and as every time we try to do something different, uh, uh, both with themes, stories, uh, but also, of course, puzzles, which is the, the main topic of, of this kind of games. And the first one was uh, very... Um, so it was experimental because it was the first one, but on the other side, we, we were very bonded to the classic because uh, it was the first experience. So we we put in it a lot of codes uh, a lot of um, hidden numbers messages and kind of classic uh, riddles although they were uh, of course original puzzles and and not just uh, copies of other stuff you can in magazines but they they were pretty abstract this is something i, I would say of course this was also meant to to provide player the the, the experience of uh, of the lab because uh, test time deckscape test time is uh, set in a, in a lab laboratory so number you expect numbers codes and, and uh, technologic stuff but on the other side you can see they all look very very how i would say abstract in, in a certain way so we we suggest anyway if you want to to create your first table to uh, tabletop or even a, a actual uh, escape room to start with uh, those uh, kind of puzzle because this is what most people expect and this is uh, the basis of the, of the of the puzzles. But at some point we we, we started to to create uh, puzzles that are more uh, ingrained in the in the team we're working on. And uh, we also start to create uh, our own uh, uh, difficulties. So for example, when we create one escape room set in uh, El Dorado. Of course, being this uh, an ancient uh, place to explore, we will not have any kind of lock, any kind of number, any kind of writing. So we, we had to work around and create puzzles that work without any kind of uh, cipher, etc. So once uh, you have uh, started creating your own puzzle, try to create your own uh, mm, rules to 
avoid doing the same and start creating something new that works for you. So basically, first of all, build your comfort zone and yeah. starting with the classic stuff is a, is a good way and a fast way to do that. And then move away uh, uh, out of it and, and, uh, and find a new balance, a new comfort zone. And when you are there, move again away from it. And uh, I always put you on the edge in order to, to find something new. This is our personal challenge, and this is why we always have fun designing this kind of games, because every time, every new episode, every new car is a new challenge for us, even no matter how experienced we, we became. So next. And uh, when you work on an escape room, try to uh, think what uh, kind of escape room this is. Is this... Uh, an actual brick and mortar escape room, or you want to create a tabletop, or you want to create a video game, or uh, you're using, using uh, virtual reality. Whatever your medium is, it will be different, but it will. this is not going to create you any problem. This is going to uh, give you ideas. Because, yeah. for example, we have yeah. done a lot of things with the, with the cards that you cannot do in the, in the real world. So basically you have to take advantage of the of the medium you are using. So if it's a physical escape room, make sure to include a lot of physical stuff, stuff that you cannot simulate with uh, computer games, like stacking objects, which works definitely better in real world rather than uh, on, on, uh, on a video, on a screen. Uh, uh, if you are using a deck of cards, as we do, uh, make sure to use the cards in very creative ways and uh, take advantage of the unique properties of, of the of whatever whatever you are using and whatever your players are going to to use to 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 play your game. Okay, so next. So as you can see here, the, those are pictures from other other deckscapes. Uh, we we moved away from from just codes and we try to to include um, very different kinds of, of puzzles. There are some classic stuff with the original twists, like the the first picture on the top left corner, that resembles like a labyrinth, but you are actually required to to do something totally different than solving a, a, a maze. Then on the, on the top right corner, you have uh, a different, uh, a different uh, riddle. Uh, and and um, there, is, uh, there is a shortcut to solve it because uh, you are basically asked to, to, to count all the lasers and try to avoid them. But uh, if you think carefully about it, you can find a, a shortcut to count them e e easily and and uh, save time so there is uh, like a like an hidden uh, an hidden question uh, in your task you are supposed to do then in the in the bottom left corner you you can see a logic puzzle but uh, it, it features other other stuff which is not uh, represented here so that uh, it moves away from from the the pure logic abstract puzzles we we did before and uh, on the right uh, bottom corner, there is a, a more visual one that features a kind of an illusion, at, um, an illusion, an optic effect. So again, we, we try to, to include in all our escape rooms uh, different kinds of, of uh, puzzles so that um, uh, players which come uh, to play the game with, with different skills and different backgrounds, everybody has the chance to, to contribute to the final result. Everybody has his moment to say, oh, I know it and contribute to it because maybe I'm the, the logic one, the logical guy, and I can easily solve the, the one on the left, but you, are, uh, you have more memory, you are more visual, and you can easily solve the one on the right and stuff like that. So always try to um ask players for different skills and yeah, this also because the, the the escape rooms are cooperative games and the cooperative games always may suffer from what is called the alpha player uh, problem meaning one player that says oh i can solve this i can solve that let me do everything because i know the solution to everything so we want to create different kind of puzzles so there is no one in the world probably leonardo da vinci but he's there now that he is able to solve <laughs> everything we, we think and this is one of the reasons that 
if you ask uh, the players what is your favorite deckscape or what is your favorite puzzle in this deckscape, we always get uh, different uh, answers because this depends on your own taste of the people you played with. So this is uh, our suggestion. Try to create different kind of puzzles. This is also be fun for you as a as a author because you have to test yourself and uh, try different things. So next, please. So um, if you have played a real escape room games or board game, tabletop escape room games, including Deckscape, you already know that most of the times you are likely to, to encounter uh, or to find uh, items. And uh, items uh, uh, are a very, very powerful resource in the hand of game designers because they serve a lot of purpose, uh, including uh, hidden purpose that the players don't realize, but the designer should keep in mind while designing the game. Um, the, 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 the basic one, the first uh, one that comes to, to your mind when you stop uh, thinking about it, uh, when you start thinking about it, is of course the, the reward, the surprise. So maybe you solve a puzzle, you you sol you open a lock, you you open the drawer finally, and there and there inside the drawer you find uh, a key. Um, oh wow! Players are always happy to find uh, new stuff, and it feels like a, a reward. And you are doing well. This is a feedback. You are doing well. You are progressing. So the, the sense of progression, this is the first thing you, you have. And the sense of surprise, the sense of wonder, which is a main uh, thing for, for a lot of players who want to play escape room games, to feel surprise and sense of wonder. But then, of course, uh, the designer can use items to, to guide the players through the escape room. For example, uh, if you find a key and you already saw a door which is locked, you now re can realize, oh, I finally found the key to open that door. So to match the expectations, you use items to match, to create or to match the expectations of the players. Maybe I found the key, but there is no door at the moment. And later in the game, I will find a treasure chest and I will think, oh, I have the key, I can open the treasure chest. So you can match or you can uh, um, anticipate expectations with, with yes. items. For example, if, if you find this, a space helmet, like the one on the, the bottom left, and you have find nothing in the room that resembles you of space, you may start wondering, oh, maybe this room is inside a spaceship, something will happen later. And one nice thing is also trying to use a, an object for a purpose that is different than what you're thinking of. So, for example, not giving you any spoiler, just uh, on the top of on the tip of my tongue. If you want to use the, that key, maybe the key is not used to to open a door, but is used uh, to create a drawing on something by following its silhouette and the drawing and giving you information, something like this. So it's always nice to have a, an object using used in a sur surprising way. So next, please. Oh, so. Yeah. This is a um, uh, something you will find in the in the demo uh, version that uh, Francesco is going to play. Uh, as you can see, the the picture, uh, which is related to a question, which is not displayed at the moment, uh, contains some some elements, but most of them, not all of them, but most of them are uh, related to the question. So the player can easily spot. The, the information and then the the player is uh, needs to think about them but is not confused by other elements which are not related to solving the puzzle and this saves time saves energy mental energy of the player and keep them engaged easier e easily by the way i see one question in the comments by uh, ryan or Rin, don't, sorry don't know how to pronounce this is asking us what type of software we use to make the games the, the components and our answer is luckily this is not our problem because we are just designers so our prototypes are very bad uh, maybe i can show you something at some point and uh, let's see and uh, we just give uh, some uh, bad 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 things to to the <laughs> designer to the actual illustrator that creates the card so 
if if you want to to create your own tabletop and also to to create the graphics for it, I think you should use something like uh, Adobe InDesign or Photoshop, etc. But if you just want to create something to play with the friends, just take uh, some uh, cards and use uh, whatever you have. Use paint uh, or draw this by hand, uh, wh whatever. Do not worry take, about it. Yeah, take pictures from the internet and, and just modify them with whatever yeah. software you are comfortable with. We will have a, a question and answer session uh, later on. But so feel free to, to share your questions and we will try to address all of them. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, at so the so best of our good. possibilities. So, back to the topic, uh, the, 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 the thing we wanted to highlight here is that uh, you need to uh, start with the polished version of, of, uh, of your uh, um, puzzles, and then you can, of course, decide later to, to put other elements that will distract the players or may, or will make the, the the solving process more difficult or longer uh, but still start with something which is really polished and avoid uh, external elements which might confuse the player or even worse might bring to uh, objection once so different uh, different uh, solutions you didn't uh, think about but the players will Okay, so next, please. And one of the things that uh, you always find in an escape room is the exploration. So ex escape room basically are puzzles plus story plus uh, exploration. So if we, even if you are writing a tabletop escape room, uh, remember not just to give uh, a series of puzzles like in, in a gaming magazine, but always connect the puzzle with the story and the sense of uh, wandering around uh, an actual place that is connected to, to, the, to the puzzles. This is uh, very important also because it keeps the interest of the players uh, as the story uh, go goes forward. Yeah. So yeah. next. And here, for example, uh, to end this first part of the seminar, uh, we have one uh, very simple puzzle you can try to, to, to solve. Uh, I don't know, Martino. Probably you don't you don't know this puzzle. So if you want to to solve it together with our, uh, I, I'm assuming the, I have to come up with a five letter word, isn't it? Like that. Yes, probably. I, I'm also assuming that the the cards displayed uh, serve as a hint, um, together with with the icons on the bottom part. I don't know. Maybe maybe I can see the there is no. No clubs, but I can see a uh, black heart. So maybe the the Q is the black heart. The the feather there is the the jack of of hearts that uh, has a feather in his hand. And then there are two stars. I don't know. Maybe the K because it's not uh, sharing any other element with 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 the, the rest of the symbols. And then there is a weird ace with two hearts. I, I have no clues, basically. It's a very different, <laughs> difficult one. What's that? No one in the comments is finding the, the very easy solution. That's, that's I need strange. some help, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, this is not a real puzzle. This is something we oh. publish uh, on April 1st on our social uh, media, like an oh. April Fool. <laughs> but uh, we didn't want to... to uh, make a joke of you uh, following the seminar. We just wanted to uh, point out what we are saying with the, with the first uh, slide, meaning whenever you try to, fi to find a solution to a puzzle, even if this is a made up puzzle with no actual solution like this one, your mind is start uh, wandering and uh, whatever you're thinking can be a seed of your uh, very next puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it, happen, want, it happened at, at least once. I remember a play test. We were making the one of the deckscape uh, prototypes being played played by by uh, some friends or other gamers, and and they came out with different solutions. And Sivan and I just realized that uh, uh, that that solution could be a good one, better than ours. So we then moved to that solution and and fixed the the. <laughs> The puzzle so that uh, it contained only one solution, which was the 
the wrong one, actually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, this happens sometimes. So this ends the, the first part of the seminar. Now we have a spoiled a little surprise for Francesco, which I hope is still uh, awake and with us. Yeah, I, I am. Followed, yes, I, yeah, I do. I'm because uh, very the seminar is about uh, creating a tabletop escape room. The first part was about uh, escape room in general, whatever you're, you're trying to, to create. But uh, now we want to show you how we use these uh, principles to create uh, the, the escape uh, series of games. And since uh, we do not want to spoil you a, a full game, and also we don't have that much time, we have sent a mysterious package to Francesco, but Martino spoiled it, its content. So oh, if you have an, an envelope with, with you... We... I do. I, I, have my, I have this envelope I received by mail kind of three days ago. Yeah, I... so yeah. Surprise, what's inside? <laughs> Right. Okay. Here before before me, I have this promotional demo which um, the, the the cool guys in the jockey sent me, and I am opening it uh, for the first time ever now. I mean, I've opened the envelope, but I I have no clue of what's inside this um uh, you know this uh, this envelope. And uh, let me say, I mean, I am about to do this test now, but I'll have a little disclaimer. I I mean, though I love this kind of board games because are very, you know, are very nice, are very, um, you know, appealing to me because of this mystery thing. I'm not good at them. I mean, I've <laughs> always been playing the, your games, uh, the games of you two, with a couple of friends helping because they're obviously better than me at, you know, deducting things. I mean, they're, they are better than me with their deduction skills. But I'll try it anyway because I think I'll, um, I'm, I'm up to this, okay? I'm really... Uh, looking forward uh, forward to playing this. So, Francesco, uh, you you can you can ask for some help uh, uh, to I the will. audience from I the see. audience. <laughs> yeah, I certainly we, we will. Yes, uh, yes. This is like who wants to be a millionaire. You can ask help from from the public, from the I authors, and, <laughs> al and also you are lucky because the the demo being something that you play during the fairs, it's uh, a little easier than the actual game, and it's right. just right. a bunch of of puzzles. So do not worry. I know you. We put you in an odd spot, but yeah, we will try to help you because we just want to show how the game works. Not. But I will. Yeah. I mean, if you're behind. Who is, <laughs> who is following right now? Thank you, Silvano. For the people who is um, following you right now, um, uh, you you can help me through this. Okay. I will show you what it's uh, what's inside this. Um, you know this. Um, envelope and if you have the solutions to or the you know the the, the enigmas and um the problems inside of this 10 uh 10 i guess it's a 10 uh card deck uh you are free free to 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 ask free to tell in the comment section so i am opening it right now and i am i think i will sorry for this uh have patience okay right i will Lower the um my uh sorry the um, my laptop's camera and I think I will I will uh, read you what's inside uh, what's in in the cards and maybe show you what's here okay so you can see I think um someone uh in the video jockey will show probably uh, the cards okay the the content of the cards so uh sorry um. Let me read this uh, deckscape demo. So it's uh, obviously 12 to 99 years to play, 1 to 6. It will be something like 10 minutes long. So you are trapped inside a small room. There is a locked door, but you don't know the code to unlock it. So it's basically a, a unlock thing. Uh, looking around, you can see a solid metal toolbox, an electric panel, and a little remote control. How do you escape from here? Caution. Do not look through this deck, nor shuffle the cards. Each card shows a number from it, uh, sorry, from 1 to 10 in the upper left corner. So you, we will see, you know, the number of the cards here, sorry, um, from 1 to 10. This game is, is, is inspired by the real escape room. Um, the players are trapped inside a room and cooperate to escape within the time limit. In order to succeed, the players have to solve puzzles, make smart use of the items they find, and understand the plot of the history. So it's pretty uh, straightforward here. 
Before playing, take paper. Uh, I don't know if I have some, but I think it will, uh, you know, it will work in some way. Uh, a pencil and a clock to check the time. Once you get everything, flip the card. Very good. I think I have everything I need. Uh, let me read to you. Take the next nine cards without looking at them and form three decks sorted by the colors. As you can see here, the back of the card, of the first card, tells us how to, um, you know, um, divide uh, the deck into different decks. Let me read the rest. Always follow the text of the card on top of each deck and proceed to the next card only when instructed to or uh, you have solved the puzzle on top. In order to solve a puzzle, one, carefully read, uh, read a question, two, discuss to find a common answer, three, flip the card to check the solution, okay? Uh, you can try to solve the puzzles on top of the various decks simultaneously or, uh, or focus all together in a single puzzle. Remember that in the end, uh, you will lose or lose altogether. So it's a win or lose uh, everybody uh, <laughs> situation. Score sheets. Uh, each time you make an error, mark a next to uh, on this red line. So if you make a mistake, if you ever make a mistake, you have to read here. You have to write something here. Make an X. Check the time on your clock. It's sorry. Let me see. It's six o'clock. So <laughs> sorry. Um, now I think I will divide. I will keep this here just to cover uh, the three different decks. I will show you, okay? Because these are the three decks. Sorry, I didn't see. Trust me. These are the three decks to be. Um, this is the rest of the deck to be divided into three different decks. I have the green deck here, and I will show you the red deck here and the blue deck. All of them are composed by uh, three cards each. So um, we already we have already seen uh, one of the first uh, cards, I think, which is uh, this one. Uh, Martino showed it, probably Silvano showed it, and I'm showing it to you right now. It's this one. It's um, it's written there. There is a toolbox, okay, the the actual toolbox where it's written. Um, there are um, a series of number. We have six, five, four, three, two, one. Basically, it's a, it's a countdown. It looks like a countdown thing. And there is a sort of lock. Sorry, let me show you. There is a sort of lock here. And what is written is this toolbox could contain something useful. In order to open it, you must insert the correct three-digit code. So this is the digit code I need to change if I'm right. Okay, this one. And there are some symbols, okay, there are some symbols, and if I am right, um, I see under the six, um, there are some screws in here, okay, there are some, you know, um, different screws, different uh, nails, if I'm right, and there, uh, you know, there are, it's, they're disposed in a, you know, in a certain way, as I can see, there is, you know, this first one may, may probably mean that there is a divided by, the second one may, be, may probably mean that it's a minus, and the last one is, a multi, is it multiplying. So if I'm right, if I'm right, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong or not, uh, this is 6 divided by 3. So I think the first number is 2. The second one is 5, and this is a minus, so it means 5 minus 2, and this is the second number is a 3, and the last one is 5. 4 multiplied by 1, so it's uh, 4. So I guess my, uh, my, my, last, my last guess is 6 divided by 3 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 4 multiplied by 1 is 4. So we have 2, 3, and 4. Uh, let me see if I am right. People are probably commenting. Okay, uh, we will help you, okay? Elijah Francesco's feed on the stream. Okay, so let me um, flip the card. And I was probably right, yes, because it's two, three, four, okay? These were actually, uh, you know, um, a divided uh, division. This was a, like a um, subtraction, and this was a multi multiplication. So I'm right. So the first um, part of the... Uh, green uh, deck is um, is solved, 
and I have inside the toolbox. So I've actually opened the toolbox. You open the lid of the toolbox. There is a set of keys. You put them in your pocket. They could be useful. Flip this card to look at the set of keys. Keep it. It may be useful. So this is the set of keys I have collected by solving the, um, you know, uh, the digit in the box. And if I flip it, there is the actual image of the, um, you know, of the um, of the keys. That makes sense to me. Seems like you are in bed at this game at all. You know, it's a little it's a little early to speak, but thank you for uh, for saying this. Okay, so I will keep this set of keys, and there is something more. So I think I will keep the keys here, as you can see, so you can see them. Uh, inside the safe, uh, there is also a plastic badge. Badge. It shows a weird grid of, of letters. Flip this card to look at the badge. Keep it, it may be useful. So I am showing to you also this picture, which is this, okay? We have a picture of a badge. There is written exit, and there is love. Uh, okay, there are some words which may be, uh, may, may have sense. This second one does not have sense because it's X, Y, Z, U. Cheers, which I think it, it is no, <laughs> it's not um, an actual word. And the last one is trap. Uh, but what is interesting, I think, is there are some th these two um, these two arrows on the um, on the right side, and these two arrows on the left side. Sorry, uh, this is the right side for you, and this is the left for you. So I think I will keep these two as well. Okay, so the first um, the first deck is over. The green deck is over, and I collected a set of keys and a badge. So I think I will show you the other two, okay? The red one and the blue one. Okay, so if you have questions, let me see. I thought you weren't supposed to use elements that distract from solving the puzzle. I don't know, but I think that this, I mean, they may, they may be distracting, but I don't know if this, uh, this is the case. The panel with a maze, we, it, this is the card five. So, this shows a, a sort of maze, okay, with a chip with a maze inside. There is something hidden behind the panel. You have only one chance to open it correctly. Push the number suggested by the panel. So I don't have to actually flip, sorry, to flip the card. I'm showing it the card, showing you the card like this, so I can't see, I can't see what's behind the last card of this deck. And um it's probably, uh, oh gosh, this it, it is pretty difficult. Okay, so it's probably, let me show you, there are two arrows, sorry. You know, this is the entering arrow uh, in the maze, and this is the the, the, um, the last, you know, the, uh, the arrow that comes out of this maze. And I think I have to draw a sort of line. So if I pick a, sorry, a... Um, a pencil, I think I will go like this. So this goes on and goes by this, um, goes here. And if, I think it will go here, but this is a dead end. So I think I will go like this. And I don't know, it, it will probably go like here and proceed. Now, if I go down here, there is, I find nothing. So I think I go, sorry, from here to here is a dead end as well. So I think I go, I'll go right dead end as well. It ends like here. So it's like one, two, three. And I can do nothing but going down and probably do the same. If I go straight on, as I can see, I can just go to the exit. So it will be like this. If you can see, I think I can go straight forward. Okay, so it by drawing a sort of line um, from the first, from the you know, from the starting point to the ending, it it makes it looks like I am drawing a number, right? 
and it is it is probably the number two okay because it, you have the same thing yet yeah, right so i have number two drawn here okay you know avoiding all the dead ends it draws like a number two so my answer for this um yeah i drew a two so my my final answer is a two push the number suggested by the panel i think i will push number two and i was right incredible okay the car good i mean i i uh I, I I'm not sucking at this. I don't know how, but this is going to this is going well. Uh, the correct number is two. Following the sh um, the shortest path, that was the shortest path from the entrance to the exit. You draw a two. If your answer is wrong, uh, I had to draw an X, but I didn't. So I got the solution for the second one. Now let me see the next one. A recess behind the panel. A poster on the wall suggests something. If you have it, find a correct key to open the suitcase. So, this one, the number six, is showing a suitcase here and with a lock. And in this image, you can see uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, different places in which to put, probably to insert, I think, a key. Now, um, okay, I need to choose, I will think I will probably the set of keys, which is this one, which I, which I got in the, you know, in the first deck, in the green deck. And I have to uh, guess which, um, which, is, is the, which one is the correct key. Okay, but I can see here that there are two, you know, two drawn keys, okay the symbols of two different keys, which I think they appear on this card. And this one is probably, um, let me see, this one, right. And this one is, let me see which one is, uh, this one, I'm, if I'm right. Okay, so uh, I need a key which which needs to be probably among you know on um, need to be equidistant if i'm right so one the this key is needs to be distant from this one of two spaces so one and two and of this one if i'm right of two spaces, so one and two. So my pick for this may be probably this one, the squared key. Okay, because that will make sense. If not, I I probably don't know what what to what to <laughs> what to choose. So my definite my my last my my uh, definitive answer is. I think this one. Let me see if I am right. Okay. You need the set of keys. The correct key is the one with a square shape. So I'm right. Incredible. I don't know how to how I got to this. <laughs> um the poster suggests the key is equidistant. So I, I was right even for the <laughs> For the for the name for for the for the word from the two keys indicated so this one is like oh, one and two and this one is one and two so I got I have been able to open the um, you know the um, the panel right very good so this is going well this is going this is going going up strangely well i don't know how but <laughs> very good i'm uh, i think i don't suck at, at this anymore <laughs> what the suitcase is empty it, we are at card number seven you uh, you double check and find a false bottom that contains a piece of paper showing weird triangles now this is pretty tough flip this card to look at the piece of paper keep it it may be use it may be useful now focus on the other card so by collecting this card, I just need to flip it, and I think I'll collect this um, this card. 
and I think it will be useful. So the set of keys is uh, has been collected. So I don't know if it will be useful anymore. I can put this here. So um, I may use, I may see what, you know, um, if it's useful for the next, for the last deck. These, I, uh, these are the solve cards, so I will stack them here. So what I am, what I have collected so far, um, uh, as well as the um, the keys, it's the beige, as you can see here, and a piece of paper. Very good. Right. Let's see. If there are some comments. Um, very good. Okay. Fine. So. Let me go on with the last deck. So I have, let me show you, let me cover the last card, a weird keyboard. This door is locked by a colored keyboard. If you have the code, push the four buttons to open it. So this is the card, okay? This is the probably the, sec, the, the eighth card, and it is the... I, I think it's the, probably the second to last, um, second to last uh, enigma to solve. Now uh, I have a sort of digit um, panel in which I have to choose um, which um, combination to uh, like press to open this door. So let me see. The door is locked by a color keyboard. If you have the code, push the four buttons to open it. I think. It is a four. It is a four by four um, um, a keyboard, and here I have a page which is strangely four by four. Is probably there is something um, there is something connected. It is a four by four, um, you know, uh, combination of letters. Some of some of them are have, you know some of them have some of them some lines have. You know, um, actual words, other have just combination of random letters. But if I am right, I need to probably assign to this keyboard the letter of this page. So I think it will be, the black ones will be L, Y, H, and P. And that, is, that makes no sense to me, probably. What about the red ones with the yellow one inside? Okay, let me see. O U S. Sorry, O U C S. And that makes no sense at all as well. <laughs> so let's try with it, it must be there must be uh, some uh, a word of uh, of a, of a, you know made sense. So let me see for the blue ones with the black uh, square in it. So V Z R A which makes no sense. <laughs> as well well let's try with the the, the 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 green one and let's see if there is something there is a connection e x i t which is which is exit which is exit so i think i found a solution well that's great <laughs> uh yeah the green yeah i see yao which is yes so the green I have now, I mean, if I'm right, I mean, if I'm right, I need to click one, two, three, four, because I, I see the exit. It is the actual, it is the actual um, code, E, X, Y, T. I'm going for the green ones. Okay. I'm going for the green ones. So let me flip this. I was right. Very good. Let me show you. Solution. Push the green, the four green buttons from the top. If you see it, sorry, um, as suggested by the badge, they com they compose the word exit. Um, I made no mistake, so I don't know. To in the badge, there is written exit in capital letters. Yes, so probably it's the exit thing. Very good. That was a clue, probably, uh, which I didn't know, uh, which I had no idea it was a clue. But yes, so I solved this. And let me put this under the blue deck. And I think I have a last one. Uh, exit. Now, the attendant. A very polite but resolved attendant stops you. Which rope should you pull in order to open the curtains and escape from here? 
Now, sorry, let me show you this card. It's the ninth card. So if there is the attendant. There are four of the symbols, which I had no clue what they are. And there is an exit. Uh, but there are two symbols, um, in, you know, in front of it. I mean, it is written behind two, you know, between two symbols uh, of the same shape, but with a different color. So it will probably be linked to this card, if I am right. So I think I will use this card. Okay. And I see that the badge is still useful because I see that there are the arrows that I show you showed you in the first you know um, some minutes ago okay like 10 minutes ago while i was solving the the, um, the green one uh, the, the the green the green sorry um the green deck so i think i have to align this this once but i don't know how to do that let me s okay i don't know I think I, it will, must be it must be placed like this. No, this for this I think I I will need some help. <laughs> okay, um, I think by doing this I can see read the comments the actual comments. Uh, do you know this is, is challenging? This is challenging. The other ones were quite not not is I mean you know not not that easy but quite understandable. While this is pretty challenging in my opinion i don't know i don't know if i'm right can you what can you say the curtain puzzle is the one i prefer in this demo so that means that you have played it so paolo if you're if you're uh, re if you're hearing this help me with this help me with this um with this uh clue because i don't know how to put this i probably i don't know probably this card needs to fit this Hmm. Does anybody, uh, any of you know the solution to this? Let me see in the comments. Uh, what was the question again? I think I, uh, sorry, let me read, the, let me reread this again. Uh, a very polite but resolved attendant stops you. Which rope should be pushed to proceed with, uh, with the, um, with the, the the escape room so there are four uh, ropes with four different um symbols i think i got this the exit is between these two symbols with the same shape but with a different color but if i'm right if i'm right because of these four these these four shapes are probably the shapes of the two cards crossed together so let me see if i'm right if it's this I think it may be. Hmm. Try to arrange it in a position that card fits within the shapes. I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, but there are. I think there are notes. So no different ways to probably do this. Uh, no, these are not aligned together. Let me see if this is probably. Yeah, I guess it's this one. Okay, if they are like this, can you see the shape of the two cards mixed? Okay, the two cards uh, aligned together. I think my choice will be, sorry, my choice will be the third one, as you can see. Let me show you. Well, it is this one. So I think... I got this. I am pulling the third rope. Okay? So, let me see if I'm, if I'm right. The correct rope is the third one. I got it. Very good. The triangles on the curtains. Um, so, just you should, uh, you should match the triangles on the beige, sorry, and the piece of paper. Uh, when all the triangles uh, match, you can see um, the shape shown on the third rope very good and i got this right so i am uh you know coming to an end that's that's nice that's nice 
Uh, very good. So ready to go. This is probably the last card. Okay. The exit is right here. You can already see the lights outside. Make a choice. Make a choice. Uh, do you want to leave alone or take the attendant with you? Okay. So I have to decide. I have to understand if I have to uh, take the um, the man. Where is the man? Where is the helper? Here um, with me. Uh, I don't know what to do, but I'm reading here that the man has a sort of sign in here, which is H point E L P. So it's probably, as you can see here, it's help. So I think he, he wants to be helped. He wants to be saved. So I think I'm, um, bringing him with me. So my pick is to this one, to this last one is. Yes, I will take the attendant with me. Right, so let me show you the back of this card. Solution, the attendant's name tag contains the hidden message, help. Apparently, he is sick of this place. <laughs> okay, so I was right again. That is amazing. I mean, I that was, I mean, flawless. I don't know how I did this, but I'm pretty impressed by myself. <laughs> If you decided to take the attendant with you, remove one X from the score sheet. Very good. How was I? How was I, Silvano and Martino? What, was I good? <laughs> You're great. Yeah. Well, this is this is the this is the demo, Francesco. It's meant to be a little bit easier and. <laughs> Come on, thank show you. some support to the guy. Come on, yeah. <laughs> in the comment section, I mean, the, 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 the people in the comment section were actually very helpful. Uh, yes. I, I needed, I needed uh, um, uh, an opinion, uh, an external opinion. But I think I made it. Uh, it was a very good. I mean, I, I did. I think I did good. But, but, but I, I need your, <laughs> I need your opinion about this. I am, <laughs> I am actually, I you know. Uh, setting the you know rearranging the cards in the numerical order but yes i mean some of the some of these cards were pretty simple in a way but at the same time they were you know the cards were very challenging okay uh, you know, well, actually, actually this, this demo was not meant to be very challenging we are sorry for everyone if we spoiled you this first demo this was <laughs> the, the, the one we, we created after the the first escape game but okay. we have a, a, a surprise for you. If you have seen the, the link below at some point uh, in the in the Gencom page, you can download the, the second demo, which is a little more challenging. I, oh, I right. think Francesco will not be able to do it. This is man. This was meant to make the players experience uh, as, uh, so. Um, learn about the the basic system, of course. But then in a in a real escape, you will find. Uh, not only like six times that number of cars, even more, oh, wow. yes, they are, but, yeah. but a lot more about the story and more detailed artworks and much more clever puzzles as well, of course. A lot of surprises. And as I said before, each each escape is very different. For example, there is one where a mummy is, is chasing you in a pyramid and I there is think. another one settled in, in the El Dorado jungle, another one where you are supposed to be part of a huge magic show and stuff like that. So they really wide a lot. But so create, creating a, a 10 cards demo was sort of a puzzle for us uh, authors because we needed to show you everything we, we can do with, yeah. with the deck tape system. So we, we wanted to review quickly the, the cards you just played so we can also show this on, uh, on the big screen. So if but you... That was a very nice, uh, a, a very well put together a teaser, okay? that, that is like, like a teaser or um, a teaser of what a deckscape may look. Okay, you know, uh, and uh, I, I really had fun playing it. I mean, I played other uh, other deckscape, deckscape episodes. This was yeah a simpler version, but you know, you know enough to you know uh, make you interested of what a line of games such as Deckscape is or a, a, you know um, an ex an escape room a tabletop game is um, if you have any thoughts any other thoughts to add about this seminar before uh, we go on with the live just feel free to to 
to tell whatever you want, Martino and uh, Silvano. Yes, in the meantime, we will quickly review the 10 cards so we can also show this uh, on the big screen just to explain some of the principles we explained before and now we oh, yeah. apply those to the to the tabletop. So uh, on the first card, when you uh, separate the, the decks in three different decks, this is something that happens you know, in all the deckscapes because it's a way to uh, recreate the exploration phase of, a, of a, an escape room because you can look at different fix at the same time and also a way to solve the alpha player uh, problem we were uh, speaking of before, meaning if you all concentrate on the same puzzle, uh, one player can uh, be a brainiac and start solving all the puzzles for you, but in this way you are sharing the problems and every, everyone is so a moment of glory. <laughs> basically, we provide different tasks at the same time. So there isn't uh, there isn't just one fixed um, 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 progression, a fixed order to solve the different puzzles. Uh, so players can separate and work in parallel in order to advance faster in in the game. And if you are stuck with a puzzle, you can always say, "Okay, I will take." Uh, I will save this for later. Let me focus on something else. Maybe, maybe I have I need an item. I need something else. So let's let's uh, concentrate on something different. So as for the the, the, the second image, we also want to to uh, answer one question we saw in the comments. Uh, yes, we we said you shouldn't add anything that uh, creates confusion, but you need to add a little something that that uh, uh, gives you an idea of, of where to look. So this is why we added some uh, screws that are not actually needed in, in this puzzle, but this is to, to let you concentrate on the, the, the point of the image you, you have to, to see. So this is why this is like this. Next. Uh, this was an item, the first item you, you find in, in this uh, demo. And uh, no, it's not only a juicy moment because you find something which is a reward, and communicate a sense of progression, but it also uh, leads you to to the next uh, riddles, you to the next uh, puzzles you will find. So it creates expectations. You now know, you now expect to find something that works with a key, like a lock, and you now expect something that is somehow related with a badge and with these letters. Very good. So okay. next. Okay, one. this is one of the puzzles that uh, seems something that are something completely different that we challenge you to to create, because this 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 looks like a maze and it's uh, the the simplest maze uh, on on the book, right? And you have no way to to get lost, but uh, in the end it's a little uh, out of the box thinking because you are not uh, just solving the maze but remembering uh, the 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 flow of what you're doing, the, the your your the course. past. The path, yeah, to create the, the symbol you, you need. Also, note that that we added the the, the, the remote control in your end just to show you that uh, you are need to to choose just one number. As yeah, a it looks like a POV. It looks like a point of view, which is you know it's yes, a very yeah. it's a very nice we, thing. Yeah, you know, it's very. We cool. could have just said uh, uh, find the number hidden in this uh, in this maze, but doing like this, we add a little uh, real world yeah, to yeah. the to the puzzle. And even yeah, if yeah. the demo is uh, a little more uh, um, sober, let's say simple in, in his illustration, because uh, yes, you know, it's played in the fair, so it needs to be something that you can concentrate uh, on uh, very easily. But we, we wanted to add a little touch to make it uh, more, more real. So next. And this is uh, something to show you uh, two things. The, the, the first one is, again, the, the, the matching, because you see the, the panel uh, above shows you seven things, and two of those things have the silhouette of your keys. So it's uh, suggesting you that this is something to do with the keys you find uh, before. And also, when you think about this puzzle, you have to think about uh, moving the keys in your end because you will want to, to find the key in the middle of the two. So you are also, in some way, playing uh, specially with the, with, the, with the keys in, in your mind. And this gives you a little sense of uh, reality. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Next. 
So this is an example of partial information. So we, we, the player finds this kind of stuff and it, it thinks that uh, there is something hidden in it. This will be useful somehow, but for the moment it doesn't know how and when and where it will make a, a use of, of these information. So uh, it, it creates expectations uh, and uh, it's better to match the expectation in the end. And one way to do that is to leave it very open and then uh, at the end come up with a, um, with a twist, with a clever surprise on how you will make use of, of this bit of information. So next, yeah. And this is something that is uh, challenging the, the player in a, in, a, in a simpler way that you can recreate. Because you might think that uh, the, the keyboard is the target of the puzzle, but actually the, the keyboard is the key to decipher the, the writing on, on the badge. So we, we, by just switching what is the key and what is the target, we created this, the, which is a simple puzzle, but uh, very, very effective for the players. Yes, uh, moreover, um, once you have understood what to do, it's like matching the, 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 the green letters with the green squares and finding the right uh, uh, word, the right uh, password, we can say, then you can see how fast it goes. So you, I, I've now understood what I have to do and bam, I, I solved it. I don't need to translate like uh, the cipher, like uh, 20 letters, which will be very, very boring. So yes. the fun comes from trying to solve the puzzle, not in uh, having understood it and having to port all the letters one by one in order to find the final sol solution. Yeah, this, this might look like hard work, but it's not because it takes you just a, a second for each try. And we are evil because the, the green one, which is the, 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 the correct one, is the last button on the first row. So Francesco went in order and find the solution of the, on the last try. And this is what we wanted to, to create. And this yeah, is uh, the, 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 the last puzzle, which lets us use the cards in a way that you can only do in a, in a tabletop game. So we, we use the, the, the material we have at hand, which is the, the cards, and you have to combine the cards. And uh, someone says in the comment, this is his favorite puzzle of the demo. Yeah, so, yeah I saw you. that. So he played it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a very clever one, clever one. Yes, of course, it, it uses like three cards of the 10 cards we have, because we wanted to show you that we can do something uh, uh, clever with the cards. It's, it's yeah. using both the, the badge. But yes, we wanted to create a, a puzzle like this to show you that and let you imagine that in a real uh, deckscape game, there will be more puzzles like this when you use the cards as some kind of objects in the in the real world. And it's also here, the, the, the attendant has this uh, help information on, on, on his... Uh, so, yeah, that was it, nice. Yeah. We, we, uh, it's a hiding in plain sight, you know? We, uh, <laughs> you are focused on, on something to, which is trying to solve this puzzle, but you might notice that there are some other details that will become relevant later on. Uh, so you have to really be sh sharp with your senses to to have to keen your senses in order to spot all this all this stuff. And then the next card, uh, which is the last one, shows you that uh, uh, by choosing uh, of uh, letting the attendant uh, and exit with you or not, uh, you have a little uh, piece of story. Of course, in the actual deckscape games the story is a little more big and there will be always some choices you can make in the end because this is really satisfying also as for us as players to to have some uh, choices during the an escape room not only to calculate the time you took to to, to exit because maybe I, I exited and i left the, the old guy be behind and uh, i will feel bad for him <laughs> <laughs> We, we we do we took some inspiration from the um, choose your own adventure style you know the the uh, books where you can you you are provided with different choices and you can choose your own path and there will be pros and cons with with all your choices this is of yeah. course just a quick example but we made uh, an extensive use of different endings and uh, choices that you take during the adventure and in the end everything will have consequences. Yeah, it's taken by it's taken from the 
uh, sort of game book thing. Yeah. I, just, yeah. Very, I love game books. So I really like this part, this lore part a little bit. Very good. Thank you, Martino and Silvano. So now we have some little questions, quick, quick a moment before we go on to the, we go further. So if you have to just, if you want to read some mm -hmm. questions and to answer this question, feel free to do that. So starting, do you first write your idea on paper on, or your sketch them? Uh, because drawing is one of the most important part of uh, it. it. It depends. Thanks for the question. Of course, it, it depends uh, on the puzzle. But yeah, most of the times we maybe we are talking and then we try to sketch something as fast as possible just to keep note of that. And then we talk <laughs> about it. We yeah. use uh, um, pictures taken from Internet, modifying them or creating them from scratches. Um, we sometimes we work for the more uh, visual and complex uh, based uh, puzzles. We work uh, together with the final uh, artist in order to develop the, an artwork that will match the, the, the our needs for the for the puzzle. Uh, so it, it depends on the puzzle. But yeah, most of the times we we create some uh, scratch, uh, some draft artwork that works in order to convey the puzzle to the playtesters. Very good. Okay. Do we have any other questions? So, Antool, do you have examples of player types, logical, visual, that sort of thing? We do. Uh, we, uh, we are in contact with a lot of uh, different uh, um, testers, uh, including uh, very casual ones and very expert ones. And we try to make our prototypes uh, being played by an extensive uh, group of people of different uh, countries, uh, different experience. And they always come up with the precious feedbacks. We take everything into account. We want to make sure that everybody, including your 12 years old uh, child, can, can contribute to, to the to some puzzles and it, it works really well. Again, this is easy because we try to include uh, puzzles with that require different skills in order to be solved. Uh, one thing that is not so easy indeed is to balance the, the difficulty of the puzzles because uh, um, you can find a puzzle which is very easy for you and very hard for someone else and someone else will find a uh, the puzzle you find very easy, very hard, and the other way around <laughs> for the difficult puzzles for, for you. So this is not so easy, uh, and it requires a lot of playtesting in order to make sure everything is uh, affordable for everybody, basically. Very good. Okay. Other questions. Marco Montanari asks... Other escape rooms or games make use of apps. This is a nice one. Yours do not. Why? Do you want to add app support? No, we don't want. Can I answer this, Martino? Sure. <laughs> we actually wanted to create a, a, a card game, which, which uh, is an escape room. And this is one of our goals as, as designers. I, there are uh, some, some uh, other escape rooms that you apps. And uh, this is important because the, the way you uh, check the solution is what uh, makes a big difference between, between all the, the games on the market. Because there are uh, the ones with the apps, with the one with the, the code wheels, like uh, the exit game, where you have to create a, a, the code on the, on, the, on the wheel and see if uh, it, it matches. There are the, the, the mechanics of uh, unlock, for example, when you add the numbers on the back to see if you find the, the, the right one. And it also uses the app. Yeah. And uh, each system has its own pros and cons. Even the desktop system, which is having the solution on the back for some player as, as a con, which is uh, you only have one shot to find the right solution. But we, we love this is the, the simplest mechanic you can find in any uh, escape room, tabletop escape room. And it also makes us for to able to create any kind of puzzle because you don't have to have a numeric solution or you don't have something to type in, in, the, in the app. So we have uh, a lot of freedom that uh, other uh, mechanics do not have. But of course, we will we lo losing something, at the, which is the, the possibility to give more than a, one answer. So we, we like the games that use apps. We, we of course, played probably all the other escape uh, tabletop games on the market. 
but we are not very fond of using apps in a, an escape room game like this that you can take with you, play it on the on the train, on the beach, etc. So it's uh, we wanted to do it like this. Also, we want to take advantage of the, of the unique properties and features of the real world and uh, avoid the, the computer and software environments because uh, one other player uh, might question why then everything is... Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, why it should be a hybrid? It could be everything on, on a video game. And no, because Dexcape makes a clever use of uh, physical properties of cards and... and uh, things you can find on them, which wouldn't be the same on a, on a screen of a mobile phone, for example. Right, okay. okay. So how many other questions do we have? Like a couple of ones more? Well, I think we have already answered this one because it was related uh, to the screen puzzle. The so puzzle. Thank you, and two. Thank you. And for asking this, do we have something more to ask? Or may we proceed for... Oh, there is there is one from Yo. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. This this we already answered. We do a lot of uh, extensive playtests with uh, different groups, different people from different countries and different uh, expertise levels. And and in the end, we find uh, a way to make uh, something that everyone can enjoy and is challenging both for casuals and both for and and of course for uh, expert gamers. Right. Um, that so, active is a, is a different series. Uh, Sylvan and I, we are uh, the designers as well. It was the original idea from which we we created Dexcape, even though it was released before uh, after Dexcape. Sorry, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of uh, you're solving a mystery altogether. The, the system is quite different, although you still use the same uh, large sized cards. Um, there is a first phase where everybody is sharing uh, cards and hints, and then at the end you will have to answer to about five questions, and you will use clips to mark your your solution, and then you will flip to find if you uh, answered correctly. So maybe who who did it and which for which reason and uh, uh, other murder mystery novel uh, typical questions. What's really cool and unique is that uh, you use the box, which is the same size of Dexcape. Maybe, Silvano, you can, you can show it. You use the box and some cars in order to build a 3D crime scene. So you have this uh, little 3D dollhouse, which uh, resembles the, the um, room where the murder took place. And you have to look for clues on this box. So maybe we can also share some Borgen Geek links so you yeah. can have a, a better understanding on how it looks like. I'm trying um, to build it. I wasn't expecting the, this question, but let's see. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Before we go on, like, yeah, cool. like this. Yeah, that was you very nice. It's a big crime scene in Detective, and you will uh, answer five questions at, at the end of the game, not uh, like in this step. So you have, like most of the uh, Mother Mystery games, you go through the investigation and you... Uh, answer the, the the question in the end. So there is a vibe. There is a similar vibe to both yeah. games, but they are quite very different. Yeah, okay. one is an escape room, and one is more bounded to the um, investigation genre. But they are all related to, of course, solving some kind of puzzle. Even though it requires different skills, and the set of rules is a bit different. Very good. So before we go on, uh, let me tell you that you may download a um, on a link on the site of Jank BB Jockey Jenkin, uh, uh, pr probably a free and play demo, a different one if you want to play it. Uh, here you can see uh, the link. And yes, so before we come to an end, I wanted to inform you, Silvano and Martino, that DV Jockey, Da Vinci Jockey, prepared a little surprise for you. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you, you heard that right. Yes. <laughs> Indeed, DV Jockey prepared, have set an enigma to be solved for, uh, by you two for everybody to see. Okay. In order to test your deduction skills. So uh, yeah, the enigma is ready. So I'm very curious to see how you are dealing with this situation. You can go. <laughs> oh, 
We have never uh, said that we are. Uh, we've that created a lot of puzzles, but I'm <laughs> we ne yeah, exactly. We never mentioned that we are good in solving them. We just tried hard for <laughs> years. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let me... <laughs> I know this. What do you see, Silvano? I see co colors and, uh, and I yes, see. I'm trying to count the, the scratches. On the and I see flowers. One, correct. One zero one cracks. Uh, four zero one. Two, three, uh, well, uh, broken. But first of all, which one? Which is the question? It's, what is the, the question? What we? Question? I don't see a question. What? What we, are we supposed to solve? <laughs> it's 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 been made by. Uh, it uh, by Barbara and Silvia. You, I, I think you have to guess. It really the, looks like uh, <laughs> lo, it really looks like our April Fool's puzzle <laughs> for for social. You know, <laughs> I that you are doomed, but I <laughs> you are clever enough. If if I made it okay with a deck of 10 cards, you can do it <laughs> you are in two with just one riddle. And you have, I think, you have to guess the numbers of the last the last two pots. Oh, okay. the flowers. Yeah, so, this is a sweet revenge for you, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's not me, and it's not uh, it's not me. <laughs> it's not my plan, it's not part of my plan. It's be the evil plan of the DV jockey stuff. So, <laughs> so let's go to the to the process, Martino. I, I, I can see some coins. The end of the is like one, three, zero coins above oh, and two, oh, one. Yeah, zero. there are three coins. So there is uh, one coin, but, but yeah, on the first one, three on the. Is it coins or maybe they come from the flower? I, put, this, I don't I understand. Flowers, sunflowers. So it's broken pots. A broken I don't know. Guys, do you have any ideas here? Martino, I think one of the numbers is the number of coins because the the first vase is yeah. one coin. One 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 of the number is the is the, um, the, the zero. I don't get the, the zero number on, the, number on the first. The last number is the okay. number. Okay. The first number. I don't get the the, the zero on the on the on the first pot. By the way, what is it? There is one on the on the bottom left um, pot. What is oh maybe it's water the water if the, the middle one is if there is water on, on the bottom mm. of the of the pot and and then the one I think I got it probably or maybe, or maybe the color might, might be also the color might no. be also the color but there is no way to tell it I think but I yeah it could be know. the color it could be the water yes. there is there is an objection one here <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think let me let me see the, the first number is the number of cracks on the vase, right? One zero one yeah. four. So yeah, the... it's the number of cracks, it's the number of cracks. So we have the number of cracks, the color or the water, we don't know yes, for the sure. Second is an and question. then yeah, on the... the color of the water, but it, it's yeah. very good. And, and, and the and the right the rightmost number is the number of coins. Yes. So Let's assume it's the water and not the color. We can say the the the, the green uh, pot without the number would be um, zero. Because what was the correct. one of the the, the, the zero? Then one? again zero, no. or maybe one depends <laughs> on the color or or the water, and then one because there is the coin. Yeah. And for the pink one, for the purple one, we have um, no coins. Uh, so it will be a zero on the end. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, correct. So it will be five and then one or zero and then zero. I think the, those are not coins, but they are the petals from the flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they are, I think so. <laughs> yeah. They look like coins. They look like the coins, yeah, from the... So the, who knows the solution? Are we right or close enough? Yeah. I mean, uh, start from DV Jockey, tell us if they are right or wrong. Correct yeah. and... <laughs> I mean, but there, there were two of you, two of you for just one. But I mean, it was a very nice, um, very nice effort you made. Very good, very good. Um, probably, yeah, some of the um, people live, okay, commenting got the answer right. Very good. So, uh, congratulations to Sulvano and Martino. And um, what <laughs> else we have to say? Okay, um, this is it. I think the the live is almost over. So. 
uh, let me thank everybody for letting this happen. Uh, first of all, the audience, so all the people who commented, who followed the live, who attended the live, and was you know a part of this uh, of this seminar of this live session. Um, from the bottom of uh, from the bottom of my heart, uh, I wanted to thank TV Jockey for you know wanting me as a host or the co-host of this uh, live um, seminar. And it obviously, is great, Francesco, thanks. Thank you, thank you so much, Martino, thank you so much, Silvano. Um, thank you to Jenkin for, you know, making, to for letting this happen, you know, uh, for these times that we are passing, for the tough, these tough times that we are passing that didn't prevent us for uh, from, you know, uh, not connecting. So this is a very good thing. And last but not least, Thank you so much, Silvano and Martino, for sharing with us your opinions and your experiences and for, you know, letting us know what is to, uh, you know, um, building, to design, um, you know, this kind of unique board games. So with this said, I mean, if you have something else to add, Silvano and Martino. No, I just want to thank you, everyone that uh, spent uh, part of his Sunday with, with us. Thank you so much for joining. Ciao from Italy. Martino, you have something fine. else? I'm okay, fine. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, so I'm um, very glad. With this said, thank you, Silvano and Martino. Um, a last thing, as you as you saw just at the beginning of the video, um, the, the live began with a short a trailer of what the deckscape line is. So what's better than ending this live session with a short feature film? showing some, you know, settings of the Deckscape, um, you know, uh, games and some, with some further references on them. Um, so if, we, if it's everything, uh, we can show it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following, for attending this live. Thank you to Silvano, Martino, TV Jockey, Jenkon, and to everybody who followed. Remember to keep playing and to check the, the site, okay? And uh, nothing else. Goodbye and thank you all. Bye. Bye.